we have gone through just a couple of weeks of such market volatility. Uh, it's days before the big conference in Jackson Hole. I want to go back to the last meeting, July 31st. You dissented. Mm -hmm. You cited low unemployment um, and your questions about financial stability, some concerns. Your colleagues were looking at muted inflation and these global developments, as they call them, that could basically hurt the U.S. economy. Explain your dissent to us. So you did a pretty good job, actually, <laughs> of laying out the dissent. It was tied to the fact that economic conditions are still pretty good. So 3.7% unemployment is still a very low rate. Uh, inflation is a little bit low. So if you look at the core measure, it's 1.6%. But if you take out some of the outliers using uh, Dallas trim mean, then it's closer to 2%. In fact, it's exactly 2%. So my own view was that we have to be careful not to ease too much when we don't have significant problems. And so the focus is not to do something that affects the exchange rate or something that necessarily takes care of the world economy. We're supposed to focus on unemployment and inflation in the United States. And so I think we're in a pretty good spot right now. And there are costs to easing at times that you don't need to ease. What's the cost? There's several costs. Uh, one is one of the ways that monetary policy works is that you cause people to buy houses and cars earlier than they otherwise would, intertemporal substitution. You choose to make an investment now because interest rates you think are going to be temporarily low, and so you make expenditures you might not otherwise make. A second is that when we lower interest rates, we make the cost of debt lower. That means that both households and firms are more likely to be leveraged. And if they get leveraged right before we have more significant problems, they're actually in much worse shape. So we have to think about the financial stability characteristics. And by that, it's thinking of how much do we want households and firms to be leveraged going into whenever we actually do have a significant downturn. How concerned are you about a significant downturn? The signs from the global economy, the signs from the uh, bond market in particular, even signs from Wall Street banks that have cut their GDP forecasts and, and recession indicators suggest the recession risk is rising. Is it rising in your eyes? So many of those indicators are tied to financial markets. So let's start with what most economists think is the likely outcome. One way to gauge that is to look at something like the blue chip forecast. So we just came off real GDP being at 2.1%. Uh, the blue chip forecast for August had uh, growth for the third quarter and fourth quarter, both at exactly 2%, roughly exactly the same as the second quarter. That's clearly not a recession. It's continued growth at a moderate pace. They also have unemployment rate at exactly basically where we are right now. It's actually a tenth less in the blue chip forecast. So economic forecasters aren't seeing a lot of weakness in the data. What I think has people really focused on whether we're going to have a recession is the combination of volatility and stock market. We obviously had a very big movement uh, a week ago when we lost 800 points on the Dow. But in subsequent days, we've moved back up. And if you look at the long bond, it is very low. So it's around 1.6%. Uh, one of the reasons for that is the global weakness. But the cure for global weakness is for countries around the world to expand either with fiscal or monetary policy in their own countries rather than just the United States to be doing the easing.